The next time you browse a scientific journal, look for the word model. You'll find a wonderful array of abstract mathematical models, concrete physical models, and even living, sometimes breathing organisms. My research examines a central question in the philosophy of science. How can scientists learn about the world? I focus my attention on an increasingly popular strategy known as modeling. Now, back in high school, I conducted research on the most common model plant, Arabidopsis thaliana. In doing so, I became interested in model organisms. However, almost all of the philosophical literature on modeling has focused entirely on abstract philosophical models and abstract mathematical models that don't have any relevance to model organisms. So, my research question is then, how can we provide a unified account of modeling that includes model organisms? In doing so, my method involved tracing what makes a model unique, moving from the abstract, the mathematical models, to concrete scale models, and finally, to the most controversial case, model organisms. My results indicate that there is a distinct feature of modeling, model validation. That is, scientists must assess and define the relationship between the model to the target. Without this, scientists are merely experimenting and not modeling. But how is model validation done? One prominent approach claims that model validation consists in a kind of similarity relation. That is, models work by being similar to their targets. However, this is intuitive, but faces a philosophical challenge. Model validation to the similarity relationship might be fundamentally ambiguous. Two things might be similar in one respect, but incredibly different in another respect. So I propose a new improved account of model validation called weighted feature correspondence. In doing this, scientists give certain weights to features that they deem more important in the model to target relationship. Not only is this more philosophically supported, this is also more accurate to how scientists use models. Take Arabidopsis, for example. In a recent study, scientists wanted to learn how a certain gene influences fungal resistance in cabbage. In doing so, they looked at the model organism Arabidopsis because the gene, the same gene, was there in the model organism. Even though Arabidopsis is very different from cabbage, and there are also other plants that might be more similar to cabbage, Arabidopsis worked as a model because the feature in question, the gene, was given the greatest weight. Finally, my approach has direct applications for science. By unifying model organisms within a practice of modeling, we can learn what constitutes a good model and develop effective strategies for using models to represent the world.